hundred years ago, the 1916 proclamation laid out a bold vision for our country. It followed centuries of oppression, the subjugation of our ancient laws, of our language and culture, and of our right to self-determination. The proclamation envisaged a land of religious and civil liberty, of equal rights and of opportunities, and of happiness and prosperity for all. The women and men who dreamed this nation into being did not envisage that one elite would replace another, that one belief system would shape our constitution and identity, or how global and European institutions, corporations, media and marketing forces would play such a huge role in our lives. They did not foresee the civil war, the partition of our country, the continuation of mass youth unemployment, the giveaway of natural resources, the cruelty of industrial schools, Magdalen laundries, psychiatric institutions, and now direct provision, nor the violence of Bloody Sunday and beyond. They did not foretell how power would continue to be abused through sex, money, politics, and privilege in a land where many of us have been silenced. The founders of this republic could not have imagined a century on the neglect of rural Ireland or the vast wealth that could coexist with cold and hungry people who perish on the streets of our nation's capital. Or that one in eight of our children would today live in consistent poverty and that too many of our elders would die on hospital trolleys or from loneliness and isolation. With a vision of a country with happiness at its heart, they could not have contemplated a society in which hundreds of people would take their own lives each year, or that so many of us would suffer in silence through crippling financial debt, depression, self-harm, the ravages of alcohol and drug abuse, and the rising levels of anxiety. Yet this, this is only half the story. It's a shadow that longs for light. There's also the story of our great feats in literature, music and sport, the revival of old customs and arrival of new ones, our success in science, medicine, business and technology, our humanitarian efforts, the hard-won peace on our island, the era of marriage equality, the opening of new doors of expression and of understanding how we see ourselves and the world. For this is also a story of Ireland's creativity, Ireland's courage, Ireland's resilience, of our refusal to give up hope that change is possible. Battered and bruised as we may be, a new Ireland is emerging. 2016 will help untangle the political and the personal, help reveal to us who we are and the wounds that we carry, offer us an opportunity to redefine who we want to be. It comes at a time when the ecological fabric of life on earth hangs in the balance, when millions of refugees flee for their lives while the fog of war, hate and fear hover over us, threatening our safety and our sanity and a sense of solidarity that says there is only one race, the human race. It is amid all of this that we are called to disconnect from the busyness, from technology and to reconnect with our true selves, with each other, with nature, with the spirit of Eru from where Ireland gets its name. We must stand together, love together and create together for whatever our beliefs, our backgrounds, our abilities. It is community that is the medicine that will heal us, inspire us uplift us and empower us to be whoever we want to be. It is time to be our own heroes. Believe that this small, beautiful Atlantic nation can be everything we dream it to be. We stand at a threshold of magnificent possibility. Many of the limitations to our freedom and our happiness exist only in our own minds. They linger in pools of fear that hold us back saying, we're not good enough or that we're not powerful enough. Well, enough, enough of the self-doubt and shame, enough victimhood, enough deference and denial, enough holding back your own brilliance. There's been too much dying for Ireland and not enough living. Commemorate the past, yes, but seize the present. From the breakdown, 
comes to break through, we can get there. No matter what storms have hit us, we must push on, people. Push on while remembering to rest and renew. Make your own proclamation. Launch your own rising. Create your own manifesto for freedom. Live your own revolution about following your dreams, not someone else's. Let this be a year to remember. A year when we awaken the consciousness of this country. A year when we start a new history, manifest a new hope, and awaken the spirit of freedom in the hills and in the rivers and in the hearts, minds, and souls of this nation.